What up, Flat Earthers? It's me, it's your boy, Cody. Am I in focus? As you can see, I am not at home. I am currently on the road. On the roadie melcher, I guess. Oof, let's see if I have the energy for this. In the middle of New Mexico. I was supposed to be back in LA by now, I think, but uh, travel got pushed. <laughs> That's what being on the road's all about. It's, you know, following uh, the, the passion and the, uh, the roads and the people and the energy and the life and the, and I'm so tired. Since I was supposed to be home and I'm supposed to be doing something else um, and I'm unable to do that video, I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do for this week's uh, Cody Woden's Day. And um, I just recently put up a piece about the 25th anniversary of uh, the television show Frasier, which is my favorite television show of all time and also very near and dear to me for a lot of different reasons. And so I, I put up a piece about my relationship with Niles Crane as a child. Uh, and that's over on my uh, blog uh, that I'm now hosting at my website instead of on Medium, which is CodyMelcher.com slash blog. I'll also put a link to the actual piece in the doobly-doo below. I'm hoping to do more writing there in the future, but I really just kind of wanted to put this piece out there because I think it's a, an important piece, not only about just the television show Frasier, but also about uh, media representation uh, and finding connectivity uh, with characters in what you're watching, what you're reading, what you're, you know, just, everything that you're absorbing. Kind of using that as a touchstone to help you find your place in the world. Anyway, so I was trying to think of like some Frasier things I wanted to do maybe for this week since it's the 25th anniversary. And uh, I remembered that in Chicago a couple of years ago, I did a show called Hey, I'm a Big Fan at Stage 773, where we had to write fan fiction and I wrote a Bulldog and Niles Crane erotica. <laughs> but it's always been hosted on this uh, website where they filmed it. Um, at the theater, you couldn't really access it and there was no way to download it. So people really couldn't see it uh, that much unless they um, they went out of their way to find it and it's kind of archived now. I thought it'd be really fun to go back and, um, and screen capture that and put that up here uh, so that you all could see it because I think it's just really fun and it's really silly. So that'll play right after this. Uh, but I just wanted to say hi, let you all know um, that I'm still I'm still out here in the middle of New Mexico, wandering through the desert. I'll be home soon, uh, and I'm going to start editing uh, the first season of On the Roadie Melcher Offbeat Path, and then soon I'm going to be recording the second season. I'm going to have two seasons recorded before I even release the first one, so it's going to be really interesting. But uh, I'm really excited. I've been having a really fun time out here, getting a lot of work done, getting to see a lot of old friends. Uh, and I'm um, just having a great time uh, enjoying uh, being out of LA. <laughs> so anyway, I hope that you enjoy this piece titled A Crane in the Dog House. Thank you all so much for uh, watching, for being a part of this, uh, for being cool and neat, and I hope that you all are taking care of each other out there, being kind to each other and yourselves. And remember, don't let the devil get your cows. Start the video. <laughs> I have some audio tech, pardon. <laughs> Beg your pardon, there we are. All right, okay, okay, okay. This is far too short for me to stand in front of. There we are, hello. <laughs> All right, okay, pardon me. One second, there we go. All right, glasses on in a moment. Here we go, hi. <laughs> Oh dear! A solitary yet posh voice rings out in the darkness of the KCL broom closet. I guess I took a wrong turn. Niles Crane spins around and closes the door, his other hand bringing a handkerchief to dust his fingers. Maybe the custodian could do a better job of cleaning the doors. Squish. And the floors too. What is that, marmalade? <laughs> Niles hurries his pace through the labyrinthine halls of the station as if moving quickly will keep his shoes clean. This hallway is dirtier than the Merry Muses of Caledonia. Niles took a moment to stop and chuckle to himself there. What a, what a quaint little knee slapper indeed. He'll have to remember that one to tell Frasier later. He rounds the corner and sees the door to the producer's booth. Ah, finally. Niles opens the door into the booth and casts his eyes for his goal. Aha, who's there? A voice startles Niles. My God! The head of Bob Bulldog Briscoe pokes itself through the door into the producer's booth. Hey, Doc's brother, what are you doing here at 3 a.m.? Bulldog, uh, I'm sorry, I had a, a late night at the office and told Fraser I would swing by and grab his attache case that he so carelessly <laughs> left here. Although I would ask you the same question. Isn't your show normally on in the afternoon after my brother's? Yeah, but I promised Lucky Larry Love that I'd take over Swoon River for him. 
His wife went into labor. Let's hope this time it's less than three kids. Let's just say that the river isn't the only thing wider than a mile. Why are you alone? <laughs> Don't you have a producer? Yeah, I let Jerry go home. Popping on some smooth jazz and R&B, maybe like slowly dying inside an empty beanbag chair, but it's not hard to do. <laughs> Besides, we don't get any calls after 2 a.m. Not even the loneliest SOBs are crying out this late at night. Well, I don't know about that. Doc? Oh, nothing, just... Daphne and I had a bit of a row two days ago, and that's, that's why you're working late at the office. Gotcha. I've been there. Still there. I hear you, Doc. Please, um... Call me Niles. Bulldog's usual manic energy crystallizes for a moment. His pale pools of powdery periwinkle paws, but only for a moment. Niles remarks inside his head that he didn't realize a color like that could exist outside of a Limoges vase. <laughs> okay, Niles. The background music that had become lost in the haze of conversation is brought back to the foreground by its lack of existence. Oh crap, I gotta pop another record on. Bulldog jumps back into the on-air booth. It was good seeing you, Niles. <laughs> Niles hovers, watching Bulldog's tendons shift, underneath his tight, definitely not Angora sweater. <laughs> With a click, a gentle piano melody dances in the air. <laughs> Filling it deep and heavy with the sounds of Lionel Richie and Diana Ross and dalliances of, empty, of endless love. You know what, Bulldog? If you want, I can stay and keep you company. Bulldog's eyes dart back to Niles, their countenance reminding Niles of a dream where he had a small boy. He was a Bognerian Brunhild, trapped in a ring of fire atop a mountain, until he was rescued by a bold, strong Siegfried, freed of his fear and isolation. It's swelling a little largely. There we are. That'd be great, Niles. Make yourself comfortable and come on in. Niles' hands, twitching nervous with energy, removes his coat, suspenders trembling. He opens the door and slips into the booth. Bulldog smiles a charming, charming smile. <laughs> Niles, would you mind turning my knob? What? Niles jumps, his back pressing against the cold wood of the door. The volume on the playback. My hands are full and the sound's coming out too. Hot. Oh, of course, this one? Niles twists the knob, his hands finding even the simplest machinations complicated to operate. He turns back and straight into Bulldog. Oh! Bulldog, I didn't know you were right behind me. I just wanted to make sure you weren't having any trouble. No, 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 no trouble at all. No. Good. That shouldn't be the hardest thing you do tonight. Niles gulps. This all makes no sense. This all makes no sense, he says. Much like Abe Sapien from Hellboy. <laughs> Good. Don't get all psychiatric about it, Niles. Just let it happen. Like throwing a free throw. I don't know how shh, Niles. Bulldog. Niles. Call me Bob. Niles feels the energy and heat from his skin mingling in the air with Bob's, a tropical storm of possibility forming just off the coast of sensibility. <laughs> Bull, Bob, I've never, good, Bulldog likes a puppy. <laughs> They're easier to train. <laughs> Bob's lips, lips press against Niles. Their mouths charging like Teddy Roosevelt on San Juan Hill. <laughs> it would be cliche to say it felt like fireworks exploding in a cosmic supernova, but cliches exist for a reason. <laughs> Everyone copies Shakespeare because it's the human condition, and so too is this moment. After an eternity of serendipity, Bulldog releases Niles' lips, the fires on his mountaintop raging higher, stronger, and hotter. As Bulldog slips Niles' suspenders down his narrow shoulders, Niles releases all of his lifelong tension and fear in a single breath. 
Wolf. Thank you.